Mysore is about an hour and a half north of the international airport. And you'll have to navigate through the congested, commercial parts of South Bali to get here. About 45 minutes into the trip, everything starts to change. The land opens up, the rice fields become ubiquitous, dotted with small villages and traditional Balinese houses and temples. Now we're in the authentic Bali. The hotel's located in this ecologically fragile area, bounded on the west by the ocean, the north by this Balinese temple, and the east by working rice fields, with views towards the sacred Mount Agung. The architects have incorporated local materials, like this volcanic pumice, into the design, mixed with yummy tropical landscaping and Hindu shrines that give you the feeling that you've arrived somewhere pretty special. Despite these nods to local traditions and building materials, this place is a clear statement about modern, tropical architecture that I can never get enough of, and one of the most beautiful, subtle, restrained designs I've ever seen in a hotel. And between gawking at the architecture and the welcome drinks, it's easy to forget what's on the other side of the lobby. The reason you're here. Most hotels we're staying at in Bali will be at least an hour from the airport. So we think the extra 30 minutes to get here is well worth it. The Sori is a great option if you want some beach time, a place to recover from jet lag, or if you just want to disconnect for a few days and be surrounded by inspiring architecture and a beautiful setting. A great way to start or end your Bali adventure. But we think a trip to Bali isn't complete without a few days inland, around Abud. So we encourage you to think about experiencing the cultural side of this island too. Bali has its own unique culture unlike anywhere else on this planet. And if you stay at the beach the whole time, you're gonna miss it. You can enter the room from the garden side of the property or from the beach side. We were in a downstairs suite, and all the rooms here come with their own private plunge pool, a beautiful bedroom and bath, and a lot of outdoor living space. The room above had a similar layout with better views of the ocean, but without direct beach access. Both are great. For me, it doesn't get much better than having the beach just steps away from the room. On our second day here, we woke up to the sound of the waves crashing and the birds singing and took a two minute walk via the beach to breakfast. Breakfast is here in the formal restaurant. The service and the food were really good. And who doesn't like to start the day with a selection of fresh juice mixes? After breakfast, it was time for an activity. The hotel offers a bunch of options, including biking, snorkeling, and an excursion into town. We opted for a guided tour through the working rice fields right behind the hotel and set off with our guide, Santa. This one is kind of like hybrid rice. Yeah. We learned how rice is grown, met some local farmers, and got a bit dirty. This was a great way to see the more authentic side of Bali and appreciate a simpler way of life. The meaning is, may God bless us. On the way back, we checked out the local Hindu temple that looks over the hotel. We opted for lunch at this casual restaurant right on the beach. And that's one thing to know about this place. I, for one, appreciate the remoteness, but if you like to go out for dinner, this place may not work for you. There's not tons of nightlife. But if you like going out for dinner, we've got you covered with seven more incredible hotel wrecks in Bali closer to the action.
say one of the things I love about the Sori is there are so many different ways and places here to relax. The world-class spa is one option, but there are lots of other ways to relax here too. You don't even have to leave your room. The architects worked with a local priest to situate nine temples around the property, and they also organized the layout of the buildings according to the local building customs and beliefs. Yeah, I think one of the really cool things about this place is they're really pushing the envelope on sustainability. This experimental building behind me makes its own power and collects rainwater. Not bad. As day turns into night, these local musicians playing the traditional Balinese gamelan beckon us to the bar for a pre-dinner drink. The hotel has a Western and Balinese menu and both were excellent. I'd give the food here an eight and a half. My only criticism is that almost all the white wine was kind of old and white wine doesn't age like red and we opted for the local Balinese wine. Who knew that was a thing? Not great, but when you're desperate, you're desperate. And this is only the second resort I've ever stayed at that did this. Every night, they do a drive-in type movie, sans cars and badly dressed people, and even supply candy apples, which are not my fave, but such a thoughtful touch anyway. Now, oh my God, it is so nice to be back in Asia where hotels do proper turndown services. It blows my mind how many high-end hotels don't do this. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. So they left us some sweets as well, not just the tea. This glutinous coconut ball thing, that's really yummy. Okay, two things we need to talk about. The pillows are really good. I think I'm gonna give them a 10. And then they put these flowers on our pillows. Oh my God. They smell so good. Besides the rooms I showed you, there are non-beach rooms that look out onto the rice fields that are cheaper. And at the other end, huge villas. The Kardashians stayed here, but don't let that deter you from coming. This place is restrained and tasteful. If you're wondering about rates and room types, check out our booking link in the description. So we just left the Sori and we're headed to the Amenkila. I've wanted to go here for 20 years, so I'm looking forward to this. Thanks for watching and see us in the next video.